Well, there, Samsung. I see you're scared. Hype is so high for the iPhone edition that you figured you better get the Note 8 out there real quick because the iPhone's gonna steal all your thunder this winter. I hate to break it to you, Samsung, but I don't think there's a chance that the Note 8 can retain the amount of hype behind the next iPhone, sadly. But as I've mentioned in the past, I'm not a Samsung hater. The worst thing about them is that they run Android, but if I had to pick an Android phone every single year, I've said, once again, I would probably choose a Galaxy. And the S8 lineup really surprised me this year. I think it was a bit of a game changer. It kind of stole the attention, the smartphone king of 2017 for quite a while. It was impressive. As I used the phone for the coming months after I reviewed it, I learned to hate it and it started doing things I didn't like. I might make a video about what went wrong with it, but for now, I want to talk about what I think is going to be in the Galaxy Note 8, as well as this is just kind of a wish list video, what I hope will happen. Because I am an Apple sheep, but I still think Apple can learn a lot from their competition. So number one is an even larger display. I'm hoping that the Note 8 can now push the boundaries of what is a phablet and what is a tablet. Usually by tradition, the Note phones have bigger displays than their Galaxy S counterparts, which is really going to be interesting this year given the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus are massive, incredibly huge displays around the six inch measurement, which of course is helpful to the infinity display. You know, those curved corners, those curved edges, and those removal of most of the bezels. They're still there, but for the most part, Samsung took a leap here by removing the physical home button and now moving all of the navigational buttons onto the display which I think for Apple is a big deal but for Samsung it's really not because Android phones have been doing that for a long time so to just find out that the most popular Android developer smartphone is now also making that switch to on-screen buttons it's not that big of a deal it's been done before so to see that brought to the note 8 I think we can imagine a display going well over six and a half inches which to be honest this is gonna get kind of crazy the Galaxy S8 plus actually had a slightly smaller form factor than my iPhone 7, which means that the form factor of the next one could well easily break into a larger form factor while allowing for that display to be incredibly massive, which of course will be great for Samsung to demo the possibilities of VR with a display that is so high resolution, perhaps even making that jump to 4K. It's been done before on other smartphones, but since this is kind of the premium Galaxy phone on top of the S models, maybe they could make that final leap and perhaps not make it run at 4K resolution out of the box. See, like the Galaxy S8 has a quad HD display, but when you turn it on, its default setting is full HD because they realize not that many people notice and running it at full HD means the battery lasts longer and only those true Galaxy Pro users, I don't know what you want to call them, actually want that display to be running at true quad HD. So perhaps with the Galaxy Note 8, when you take it out of the box, it's running at quad HD, but if you go into the settings, you can up res the entire phone to 4K resolution. That seems like something Samsung would do to try to target the Apple demographic and say, look how terrible your smartphones are. Our pixels per inch are so superior. It's not gonna change anyone's mind, but Samsung likes to brag about how much better they are. So that I could totally see happening. Number two is something that Samsung's been a little bit behind on and that's the dual camera. Everyone's kind of anticipating it at this point. It already was kind of a shock that the Galaxy S8 did not have a dual camera given that so many other smartphones are now doing that. The iPhone did it, so then Oppo followed and then OnePlus followed. So now it kind of feels like the Galaxy lineup is a little behind, even though their cameras are fantastic. I remember testing the Galaxy 8 camera and I loved it. However, I'm getting a little bit sick of the Galaxy wide angle shots. I don't understand this idea that the main problem cell phone photography has is you can never have a wide enough camera angle. I don't find that true to be all. In fact, if you want video to be cinematic, you typically don't do wide angle. It just kind of looks awkward and I don't like that the front facing camera even is very wide angle. And I get that they are trying to let you put all your friends in the picture, but that's that's never a problem to me because I don't have many friends. And also when I'm just trying to take a regular selfie, I don't need to get 80% of what's around my face. I'm just trying to take a selfie. It's just my face. And that wide angle kind of makes the center of my face look a lot more bulgier. So anywho, it's rumored that the telephoto lens on the Galaxy Note 8 is going to have a three times optical zoom instead of just a two times, which I kind of hope that rumor isn't true. The telephoto camera on the iPhone 7, I think is at perfect length because you can be filming stuff in the wide angle on the iPhone is good enough for me. It's a pretty basic wide angle, but of course, far often when I'm filming stuff, there are things that are far away that I cannot get close enough to. And that dual camera is nice. You know, you hit that two times and it zooms in. You can do that while recording a video. And it's been very handy. And I think that two times is a comfortable zoom in. And if you want to pinch in on that sensor even further, you can. Now I get that with the Galaxy Note 8, Samsung is trying to one app Apple again and say, our lens goes three times. But then again, it kind of ruins the potential for doing those beautiful portrait shots that the 
iPhone 7 can do. It's one of the benefits of having a dual camera. They use the telephoto lens to take the picture and they use the wide angle lens to create a 3D map so that the camera knows exactly what to focus on and what to blur in the background. It's a really cool effect and they've done it on the OnePlus 5 now, which is a budget smartphone. And given this is supposed to be kind of the cream of the crop premium Android smartphone, I feel like those portrait shots are gonna be a little difficult on a Note 8 when you're zooming in three times instead of just two. I feel like that's that's a little overkill. And that other rumor is that both of these lenses would have, and that other rumor is that both of these lenses would have optical image stabilization, which of course is well welcome and I hope that happens. Now I think because Samsung is rushing this and they're trying to get the Note 8 out before the next iPhone, I feel like they've given up on the idea of embedding the fingerprint reader underneath the display. A lot of people had been commenting for months now that you just wait, the Note 8 is gonna have it underneath the screen. Now I feel like the rumors are saying they're more focused on trying to steal users from Apple and trying to get their smartphone out first. And typically when a company is doing things like that, they're not going to unveil the first one of a kind feature like that because that has never happened yet. And I feel like the company that's going to introduce an embedded touch ID sensor is probably taking their time on that because the rumors are saying it's very difficult and we're still not even sure if the iPhone can pull that off. So I have my doubts. Now given there's a couple leaked images of the Note 8, I'm not exactly sure where the touch ID sensor is because it doesn't look like they're putting it on the back. So they may have gotten rid of it entirely and just are gonna now focus on face unlock, iris unlock, and just use the passcode. Perhaps they took a Samsung Galaxy poll and realized that a majority of the users were not using the fingerprint reader. I don't blame them. On the S8, that's kind of in an awkward spot. I have one friend who owns a Galaxy Note phone and he doesn't even have a passcode on his, so there you go. So my rule of thinking is that on the Galaxy Note 8, they're going to try to upgrade their cameras for facial recognition and iris unlock and make those the new replacement for the fingerprint reader because Samsung, I don't think, has embedded Touch ID into their software and their purchasing history as much as Apple has, given Apple kind of invented unlocking your phone with your fingerprint. They build that into the App Store. They build that into their MacBook lineup. I feel like it's not as big a priority with Samsung, so they'd have no problem removing it. And of course, on top of all of these wishes, I hope that the Galaxy Note 8 does not explode. They really have to hit this one hard because the Note 7 was such a disaster for them, and it almost ruined the entire lineup. It's kind of a gamble that they're actually trying to release another phone with the word Note in the title. As in, if we get reports that the Note 8 starts exploding again, which is why it concerns me a little bit that they're rushing the release and trying to get it out early, don't cut corners, Samsung. Be very careful. If you screw this up again, you're gonna have to cancel the Note lineup entirely. If the Note 8 starts exploding and you have to start recalling it, there will be no Galaxy Note 9. That will be the death of that lineup, which of course would be a shame. It's a cool lineup. What do you guys think of the Galaxy Note 8? I'm very curious about it. I don't know if I do a reaction to the keynote or whatever, but I'll probably have to review it at some point, which I'm not necessarily looking forward to, but it shows Apple what they have to do to conquer the next generation of Android phones, which of course only gets me more excited for the next iPhone. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.